Do you want to get started with real-time intelligence and KQL, but you just don't know how to begin? I've been there too, and that's why I created this video. In this video, I cover some of the basic KQL statements like project, where, summarize, render, order by, and top. I've also written an article about this. If you prefer reading and seeing some screenshots, I put the link in the description. And if you need demo data, I also recorded a video about that. And there's also a really nice seven-step tutorial by Microsoft also. The link of that will be in the description. So let's get started. So this is my fabric environment and the real-time intelligence environment to be specific and uh, I'm going to my uh, real-time analytics workspace there where I have my real-time intelligence solution so you see I have an event stream the spike demo set I have an event house there's a KQL database attached to it and from there I create all kinds of dashboards and also a semantic model for a Power BI report. What you need to do when you want to query your data and get to know the data is you need to go to the event house and let's open that. Once in the event house, we see all kind of things happening here. What's for us important is the KQL database because we want to query the data. We want to get to know the data and analyze it. So I'm clicking here on KQL database. This is my demo event house and you see I have quite some tables in here also from previous tutorials and for example the bike table if I click on that we see all kind of data is continuously coming in but now we want to query it so how can we do that easiest way is go to this button query with code and click on it and once you click on it you already see some suggestions so if you are really completely new to KQL uh, to analyzing your real-time intelligence data your streaming data click there and pick one of these options like the show any 100 records that's like really great starting point because it's also a really basic query but it already shows you what you can do and that's what we are going to do now I click on show any 100 records and we see this query. There's also some comment here at the top. Use take to view a sample number of records in the table and check the data. We see bikes and we see take 100. And what are you actually looking at? Bikes, that's the table where our data is. We could also say we only want to run bikes so without any command and what would happen if i click on that let's have a quick look we get an error message it's like this query limits exceeded query execution has exceeded the allowed limits the limit is 500,000 records so not all records were returned it makes sense i mean who wants to look at that many records you see that here the number you see we had an error after four seconds and you see the columns so if we only would run the name of our table we would get the results up to that limit so now we have this take 100 statement and you see here this symbol it's the pipe symbol it connects commands in KQL so you can pass data from one step to another step and it will make sense in the following code snippets that I'm showing you and then we have take and the take comment limits the results for example take 100 gives you this 100 rows back so if we run that and we don't need to select anything here we can just say run you see we get 100 records and we get some bike data here so that's really easy we are just saying we have a table we want some results so then you use take and you could say take 10 take 5 whatever you want so now i will show you how we can build this code up and use some more kql and the next code snippet that i want to show you is project and project is really handy because now we see all these columns here but maybe we don't need all these columns maybe we only want to see like the neighborhood the number of bikes the number of empty dogs and maybe even the current time but we are not interested in anything else here so using project we can limit what we see in the end result so what I can do is I can put here another pipe symbol project neighborhood number bikes number empty dogs and current time you see we can just combine these you don't need to put in some comma or other stuff just another pipe symbol new row project what you want to see we see these four columns that we wanted to see 
Now there's one thing, I'm more from the data visualization side of things. When I see these column names, I'm like, this is not really readable, user-friendly. If I want to visualize this, I don't want these underscores in my column names. So how can I change that? We can use aliases. And how would that look like? It would look like this. Like we still have the project statement and neighborhood. I just want to be neighborhood. But number of bikes, I want to be written as number white space of white space bikes. I just put the text I want in between these brackets and then it will be shown. When I run, you will see what I mean. Now we see it with the white space. Much easier to read, better for the end user or for yourself or your coworker if you share stuff with them. Now, the next statement that I think is very, very important is the where statement, because now we select like 100 rows of our bike data set and we have these columns that we want, but maybe there's even another condition. Like we only want to see the data when there are more than 10 bikes. And we can just add a where statement for that. So I could put it here where number of bikes is bigger than 10. And you see number of bikes is bigger than 10 here. So that's really easy. It's just like where and what you want to see. And you can, of course, combine this. So now we have number of bikes is greater than 10. But of course, we could also say and the number of empty dogs should be greater than five. So we want to see only the data when there are more than 10 bikes and there are more than five empty dogs. And for example, here we see two. Let's run that. And now we see that. So you can just combine it, for example, with an end statement. Let's go to the next statement, summarize. Because now we have the columns that we want. We have this where statement. Sometimes you want to summarize, like the sum of something or the average, the min, the max, these kind of things. How can you do that? You can use the summarize statement. Let's remove the project statement here and say summarize. And what do I summarize here? The total bikes, it's the sum of the number of bikes and the total empty dogs, it's the sum of number of empty dogs by neighborhood. So these neighborhoods in my data set here, they have now the sum of total bikes and the sum of total empty dogs. And the by neighborhood is the reason why we see this by neighborhood here. And like I said before, you can do this with sum, but you can also use, for example, average, max and min. Let's run this one to show you. We have like the sum of the bikes. We have the sum of the empty dogs, but we also have like the average here and we have the max of bikes and the minimum of empty dogs. And then I said before, I'm really about visualizing data. And this next statement is one of my favorite KQL statements. It's actually render where you can already visualize your data. So you don't need to wait until the dashboard part, but you can already here visualize it. And how can you do that? We use the render statement. Let's remove this. So I go back to summarizing the total bikes by neighborhood. And I say, I want to see this as a bar chart. If I run this, now we see our neighborhood, the total bikes and a bar chart. We could click here on table, then we would still see it as a table, but now we already have our bar chart defined. And on the right side, you see this visual formatting pane where you could give it a title. And I just type sum of bikes and you see sum of bikes. Of course, we would give it a reasonable title. This is just to show you how it works. You could also choose another chart here like a column chart. You see, we used bar chart in this example, but you can still try other things here, like a multi-start, these kind of things. And now you maybe think this is a little bit unorganized. We can use the order by statement and we can use that in the table, but also in uh, like our visual. Let's add order by. So now we ordered our number of bikes by neighborhood by the sum of the bikes descending. You could, of course, also say ascending. And then the last thing I want to show you, the last KQL query is top, like a top five. I want to see the top five neighbor uh, with the bikes they have, for example. And that actually is just adding top five. Now we get this in a table again. Of course, we could say we want to see this in a bar chart like this. 
and we have it in the table and in a bar chart. This is really easy. It's just top five by the column you want to use. So you see all these statements, they are very intuitive. At least I feel for me, they are very intuitive. It's really easy to write. And especially because this is also really fast. And when you're using something like take 10, take 50, take 100, performance is also really fast. So you can just play around and see what works best for you. So we had a look into how can we get our data? We go to the event house, we go to the KQL database, and then we can just name the table we want to query, in this case, bikes. And I showed you how you can use take, like take 100. Uh, we looked into project where you choose which columns you want to see. We looked into the where statement, the summarize function, the render where you can make it visual, order by and top. And I think when you know these, this is a great start. Of course, when you're working with your data in the end, you will need more of these queries. And there are really great people and websites that dive a little bit more into these things. But this is really like your beginner guide. You want to get started and you just don't know how. Try these queries. And I will put the link in the description of the article I wrote about this, where you also can just copy these queries if you want and try it yourself. It is very easy and I think it's a great starting point.